residential gated community with spectacular panoramic views of the Mua Hills in a peaceful and serene environment in Kitanga. The project is subdivided into 50 by 100 plots situated 3 kilometers from the Machakos Junction, close proximity to Primas Academy, Serene Park Estate, Machakos People's Park, Konza Techno City, Schools, Banks, Water and Electricity. Introductory price is Kenya shillings 600,000. Kijani Hills is a place to call home. Open day will be on 22nd February 2020. For bookings, SMS your name to 20866. If only all things in life were as simple as two bob per minute to any network. Enjoy the best voice rate in Kenya. No bundle, no expiry, no minimum top up. Now that's simple. Switch to Airtel, the smartphone network. The Waste Electrical and Electronic Equipment Center is an ISO certified company leading in safe disposal of e-waste in Africa. E-waste defines all electronics that are obsolete or are overtaken by technology, e.g. phones, solar equipment, TVs, cables, microwaves, batteries, etc. They contain carcinogenic elements such as lead and phosphor powder that enter the food chain through reckless disposal of electronic equipment. Take initiative to dispose safely. Reach us on email or the numbers on your screen. Taking pride in constructing tomorrow skylines. Adding strength to Kenya's landmarks. Presenting the power for specialized constructions. Cementing the nation's future. Simba Cement, the strength and pride of Kenya. Now also produced in Nakuru and Mombasa. With Libana M-Pesa, you get more and now you can win. Kwa majina naitwa Salma Salim natoka Mombasa County na mimi ndio mshindi wa nyumba ya Lipa na Mpesa nilikuwa nimelala nikasikia simu nalia nikapokea I was so excited at the moment option ya kwanza itakuwa kuirent wa Kenya wote wazidi kushiriki wataweza kushinda vitu vingi kutoka kwa Safaricom Lipa na Mpesa and win now do more with Lipa na Mpesa 143 Brookview presents to you the biggest deal. Buy a fully serviced 8th acre plot at 6.85 million shillings and build your dream villa. 143 Brookview in Membley is a luxury gated community on 20 acres with serviced plots and ready house designs for selection and construction at cost. It's easily accessible through the northern bypass and is in close proximity to schools, hospitals and malls. Social amenities to include a nursery school, retail center, riverfront recreational park and a clubhouse. So book today with only 10% and get amazing fittings for your dream villa. We welcome you to our open day on 22nd and 23rd February. SMS 143 to 20409 or call 0784 143 143. Financing available from Standic Bank. 143 Brookview, a development by eBoss Investments Company Limited. Mavuno Fertilizers, a soil and crop specific fertilizer in Kenya, helps improve food security by improving crop yields through application of scientifically researched nutrition based fertilizers. More than 500,000 farmers in Kenya can have easy access at affordable packs of 1 kg to 50 kg across major agro dealers. Farmers who have used Mavuno Fertilizers have realized 30% more yield. Please feed your crop and soil with the best fertilizers for future prosperity. Call us today and learn how Mavuno Fertilizers is helping in increasing food production in. Africa. Rashes again? <laughs> kiss kids diapers. Kiss kids, no rashes. Kiss kids, no rashes. Bye.
Bye bye, rashes. Bye, diapers. Cheese kiss kit. With Libana Mpesa, you get more. And now you can win. Libana Mpesa. There are surprise gifts to eight customers every minute. Tractors with extras. Libana Mpesa. Plus six apartments to be given away. Make payments via M-Pesa Buy Goods or Pay Bill. Every 100 shillings spent on Lipana M-Pesa earns you an entry into the draw. Do more with Lipana M-Pesa. This is NTV. Good evening. The judiciary is the custodian of justice in Kenya, but amid rising frustration about how it's working. Tonight on Team Coverage Wednesday, we put the judiciary in the dock and we ask just what has gone wrong. Welcome to NTV Tonight, the top stories. Tonight, <laughs> Deputy President throws Rashid Echesa under the bus. I don't need even... Uh an appointment with the deputy president. He's my friend. Now Ruto wants police to probe how Echesa breached security in accessing his office. Also tonight, I need to represent you to say we have lit from unscrupulous lawyers swindling unsuspecting victims. To graft in the courts and the tilted balance of justice in favor of fat cats. You don't see why the the person who is stealing out a million is being leniently, you know, sentenced while yourself having stolen a mango, <laughs> you're also being sentenced to three years or ten years. We ask the tough questions on team coverage Wednesday. Plus how the Ministry of Health could have questionably spent 5 billion shillings NHIF money in UHC card printing exercise, now NHIF could be facing a cash crunch. NHIF cannot survive in the current structure. It cannot uh, survive in the current form of doing business. And the agony of parents with children stuck in COVID-19 epicenter. It is painful. When your child is suffering there, yet we are here. We want our people back alive when we can still talk to them and we hear they are well. Relatives' fervent appeal to the government. Live from the Nation Centre, this is NTV Tonight with Smriti Vidyati and Mark Masai. Good evening. Joining us in sign language interpretation tonight is David Agondoa. Now, the judiciary is the arm of state, mandated to deliver justice. But across the nation are tales of Kenyans who have suffered injustice through the strong arm of the judiciary. From absentee judges to hundreds of thousands of cases yet to be heard or determined, some Kenyans have made the courts their second home, waiting desperately for justice for years. Well, it is team coverage Wednesday and tonight our topic is judiciary on trial. Joining us live from Nakuru is our correspondent Bridget Ngana. Oko Okuso, Okusa, beg your pardon, is live from Kisumu City. Here in the capital, we have Silas Apollo and Ken Mijungu. Also joining us is Principal Judge of the High Court, Lydia Chode, who has been tasked by the Chief Justice himself, David Maraga, to respond to the issues after our coverage. 
All right, first, though, to a story that has dominated the headlines this week. And in a new twist to the Rashid Echessa fake arms deal saga, Deputy President William Ruto is now throwing the man who describes him as a friend under the bus. The DP has written to the Inspector General of Police demanding to know how the man he described as Mr. Echessa, accompanied by foreigners, access his Harambe Annex offices. Mel Miendo has the latest in Echessa's alleged 39 billion shilling fraud case in a moment and in what seems to be a case of being thrown under the bus. But that's probably just our interpretation. You be the judge. Deputy President is my friend. We've been friends for a very long time. I don't need even uh, an appointment to see the Deputy President. He's my friend. That friendship Echesa describes may no longer hold as it becomes apparent that he is now walking alone. In an unexpected move, the Deputy President in a letter to the police chief states that Echesa and some strangers accessed the waiting room at Harambe Annex offices and purportedly signed a contract. It goes on to term the incident as a serious breach of the DP security and calls for a thorough forensic investigation. Ruto is now calling on police to establish how Echesa and his accomplices accessed his offices and who facilitated their entry. He's also urging Inspector General Mutiembai to establish the identity of those who accompanied Echesa, their immigration status and their mission in the country. This comes hot on the heels of police questioning staffers at the office of the deputy president over their alleged involvement in the 39 billion fake deal for the supply of military equipment. Detectives have visited the Harambe House Annex office three times and have also shown the two armed dealers in the alleged tender scam photographs of staff members from the office of the deputy president to help in identification. Echesa and his three co-accused, Daniel Oteno Omondi, Clifford Okoth Onyango and Kennedy Oyomboya, pleaded not guilty to obtaining money by false pretenses, conspiracy to commit a felony and uttering a false document. The pre-trial hearing is set for 3rd March 2020. Mel Miendo, NTV. And no. now to our team coverage topic of the day, Judiciary on Trial. As you can tell, we are all very anxious about this and excited about it as well because we put a lot of hours into it. Joining us first is Bridget Sangana in Nakuru on the plight of Kenyans seeking legal help from the lawyers. Bridget, over to you. Yes, Smriti and Mark, stories of legal officers, in this case lawyers, swindling Kenyans of their money and property have been on the rise in the country and while the victims have been seeking legal redress, it seems that the system is out to protect their own. Just take a look. When Joel Kamau went to the Nakuru Law Courts to seek redress against a local SACO, a chief and another suspect for assaulting him and taking away his equipment, he had no idea that his lawyer would turn on him. When the judge awarded him compensation, navigating the corridors of justice proved difficult. A lawyer, identified as Gidiru Nganga, volunteered to help him track his money. Kanabia <laughs> Kamau was awarded 393,950 shillings as compensation, but the lawyer only gave him 170,200, he says. Our uh, 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 wakili, abawa na watu. Kwa Kamau sought the intervention of the Advocates' Complaints Commission, but his case was dismissed. But he is not alone. 
In Machakos County, Jackson Maingi walks with a slight limp. Ten years ago, he was knocked by a PSV vehicle. He took up the services of a Machakos lawyer, Dambuki Silla, in seeking compensation. When Maingi confronted the lawyer about the money awarded to him, his nightmare began. Tulipoenda kotini, yaji mwenyewe, akatuwa jaji mendi yake, ambayo likuwa faliwashe ni kwa elfu miambili na msini. Maingi's attempts to reach the lawyer have been futile. We did not find Ndambuki at his office when we visited. He was also unavailable on phone. In Kandara, Muranga County is yet another case. Paul Njuguna's wife and children are lucky to have survived a tragic accident two years ago alongside other passengers. Their lawyer, Victor Kiriyama, won a compensation case, but they are yet to see the money. Inamo Talehetano mwezi watano, tarehe moja mwezi watano 2018 wakili alitupigia simu akatuambia yeye ni wakili na anafanya, anafanya, anafanya kazi ya kusaidia watu tukakutana kadara tukampatia kazi alilipwa tarehe tano mwezi wa kumi, tukajua amelipwa pesa tukampigia simu akakataa kuchua, kuchukua simu tangu sikio hakuna siku amechukua simu yetu Paul says that even after complaining to the Advocates Complaints Commission, the lawyer is still practicing. Kuligana na vila tumefuata, tumeonera vizuri, insurance, walashirikiana na wakiri kuiba wakenya pesa. Lawyer Kip Koechnetich doubles up as a member of the Disciplinary Committee of the Advocates Commission and the LSK Council. He says there is an avenue for recourse. Where are our lawyers also withheld funds for a client? You can always file an originating summons and go before the high court in this country asking for accounts. So um, lawyers have nowhere to hide. So long as there is sufficient evidence, the disciplinary committee does not hesitate to crack down. Kamau, Maingi and Juguna are just a few among thousands of Kenyans swindled by lawyers. Many more continue to suffer at the hands of those who should be protecting their rights. When you listen to such tales, you are not, um, you cannot even help to just have emotions that I evoked within you from a personal perspective, but you can just see the struggle that most Kenyans are going through. And while some are lucky to have their day in court, sometimes the wheels of justice grind slower and it takes longer than they expected to take in the corridors of justice, as my colleague Oko Kusa looks into that. Okusa. Yes, Bridget, uh, as they say, uh, does justice uh, delayed is justice denied. And as for many Kenyans, uh, the wheels of justice tend uh, to drag or uh, rather grind slowly. And this means that some of the cases uh, in courts drag for as long as decades. And uh, this has even been made even more alarming by perceived, um, uh, by, by perceived manipulation of uh, judicial processes by uh, officers of the court and uh, this of course means that uh, it is becoming it's sort of deterring the chase for justice here is a report I, rep I prepared earlier take a look mzee michael karuku watches pensively from the sidelines of the milimani law courts awaiting his turn in the day's court schedule the 87 year old has made this trip for over 55 years since 1965 chasing justice in a land case. Nanikija Kotini, Napiwa Mwaka, Miakamiri, Serekari in his idea, in Marizia, he casey, Kabila Sijaenda, eh, Manasasa Warren in Fanya case in our Warikufa, Nini Badu, Wananisumbu at Wanaka Uku. Karuku's story exemplifies the frustrations of many a Kenyan seeking justice in the courts. One afternoon in March 2010, the lifeless body of Hesmond Kidera was discovered in a thicket not far from his home on the outskirts of Kisumu, a discovery that sparked off an orgy of violence that culminated in the touching of Michael Ongoro's homestead on suspicion that he was behind the killing. Police arrested nine suspects, including Samuel Kidera, and charged them for arson. <laughs> All the nine accused persons testified before senior resident magistrate Dolphin Okundi 
in Maseno in this criminal case, number 1331 stroke 2011. But rather mysteriously, the testimonies disappeared. Hiyo ndiyo chungu ambayo tuko nae, tuongea na mnagani, na mbeleni tumeongea, paka defend witness wameongea, sasa tukirudia na ye mlalamizi yake hiko, na hii yetu meenda wapi. An inquiry letter was written to Magistrate Okundi, which read in part, Given that you typed your proceedings when hearing this case, this therefore is to inquire from you whether you can be able to trace the missing proceedings from your laptop. Okundi was since retired from the dock. He is here to respond to the letter. Kurudi kuongea sisi tunaona ni ngumu. Imagine kama mimi, nimesa kudhika na sisi na hiyo kesi. Siwezi kuongea tena. Kider and his co-accused have appeared before six magistrates for the entire period of the case, which is among the oldest at the Maseno Locots Registry. The case is set for hearing again on 31st of next month, and Kidera hopes that this will be the last time they will be treading the corridors of justice. Whether they will be found guilty or not, they just want a fair trial, and the case conclusively dispensed with. Well, the situation is not uh, unique in uh, the, uh, both uh, cases, and uh, Mel Miendo has been digging through judicial, uh, been digging from the judicial, digging dates from the judicial uh, cases, and uh, to just to find out uh, the extent of backlog in various uh, courts across the country. Mel. Yes, Okusa, the state of the judiciary report 2018-2019 says the backlog of court cases at June 30th, 2019 totals 341,056 cases. Now, the courts with the highest backlog of cases in this period are the Magistrates Court at 245,268 cases and the Cathy's Court at 63,443 cases. In the same period, 225,322 cases were in the courts between one and three years, 75,953 cases stayed in the courts between three and five years, and those that took five years and above stood at 39,781 cases. So we go to the Supreme Court, where 93 cases are still pending from the last five years, 41 of which are classified as backlog, as at the end of 2018-2019, 6,004. 50 cases were pending from the last five years at the Court of Appeal, of which 3,631 are classified as backlog. In all the high courts countrywide, 87,460 cases are pending from 2014-2015, 63,443 of which are categorized as backlog. We go now to the Environment and Lands Courts countrywide, 7,160. 62 cases are pending from 2014-2015. Case backlog here stands at 16,026. In the Magistrates Court, 437,387 cases remain pending, out of which a total of 245,268 are classified as backlog. In the tribunals, pending cases are 26,439 from the year 2017 to 2018. The backlog of cases has been attributed by the judiciary to insufficient funding, but the judiciary itself is in the dock for a betting graft within it, as Silas Apollo has been finding out. Silas? Yes, Mel, it is no secret that the justice system in Kenya is manipulated by those with deep pockets. Chief Justice David Maraga has openly acknowledged the existence of cartels within the judiciary, while the CJ before him described it as a bandit economy. Whichever way you look at it, there is no denying that justice in Kenya is for sale. Here is my report. In May 2018, a Mombasa court sentenced the man found in possession of 155 rolls of bang to life in prison. The court ruled that Emmanuel Church had all the intentions of harming the youth. Fast forward to January 2019, and another court in Nyahururu slapped another suspect with a two-month jail term for smoking bang. Now, 
compare the speed with which they were sentenced to other high-profile cases touching on those with deep pockets, like that of former Nairobi governor Evan Skidero accused in a 200 million shillings graft case. Deputy Chief Justice Philomena Mwilu, the NYS2 scandal, Kenya pipeline, just to mention a few. Adjournments, delays and even questionable acquittals have been the case. If you do not have a judiciary that has an, a good image and that has the confidence of the public, then we all suffer, including prosecutors and the police, because then what are we doing? It is a waste of time. Perhaps the feeling in former Chief Justice Willie Mutunga's mind in this remarkable moment of candor. The bandit economy. I still uh, believe that we have those particular issues of cartels and the corruption. A 2011 report by the Transparency International found that close to 10% of all bribes in the country ended up at the judiciary. We said, Iko Kira Pari. Now, Okiangaria, judiciary at the Kwanza and the Meshukurikia, Ilo, Ilo, Champo, Said Kuriko, Kuriko, Idara Singine. When the culprits have been arrested, culprits have been, uh, uh, evidence has been taken to court. Then they're given bail and they're able to go back to work and they're being treated as angels who are just being molested. Not even a radical shake-up of the system in 2003 that saw 23 judges and 82 magistrates sacked over high-profile corruption allegations has salvaged the situation. Now I'm being labeled the high priest of corruption. If that's what it means, I take that title without with the no reservations i will defend my officers when they are unfairly being criticized lawyers have not been without blame either is it right for legislators who have control over funds and exercise oversight over the judiciary to appear in courts as counsel where the big fish is concerned there are some unscrupulous lawyers who would like to be clients of the judges and magistrates? The question on the minds of many is how the judiciary will fight graft if the judiciary itself is a victim of graft. Now, from justice for sale to the tilted scales of justice in Kenya. In Kenya, if you're a small fish, you're more likely to drown in the murky waters of the justice system, one that evidently favors the big fish. Olive Barrows make a comparison between the outcome of cases that face the rich and the poor. Here is our report. The law is an ass. Used in instances where the letter of the law defeats its famed spirit by being unreasonable and downright irrational. An unsympathetic side to the law which anecdotal evidence has shown us you're more likely to be acquainted with if you're one of the have-nots, better known as the small fish. For instance, if you were sentenced to two years in prison or a fine of one million in the alternative for admitting to being in possession of a python. You don't see why they... The person who is stealing hundred million is being leniently, you know, sentenced. While yourself, having stolen a mango, you are also being sentenced to three years or ten years. That matter. That sends the message that if you're going to steal, steal big. After all, when you're a big fish, the law ceases to be an ass and yields itself to your manipulation. Somebody is arrested. You've got a batteries of lawyers. Some of them members of parliament uh, rushing to go and, and defend them. The court is so quick in, in giving bail to get them out of me, you see? Then they just go out and then the case will never be heard until evidence is lost. Where the big fish is concerned, there are some unscrupulous lawyers who would like to be clients of the judges and magistrates in the sense that um, they will take money to them. There is court capture, just like you have state capture, where certain people have a lot of influence in before the, you know, in the courts. The said compromised judges stand accused by the Director of Public Prosecutions and the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission of granting unnecessary adjournments that eventually lead to witness fatigue and weakened cases. If it is a high-flying case and there's a lot of media coverage and all that, 
what is the easiest way to do it? I mean, to get out of that limelight. You get more time, then it, the coverage dies down, and the case becomes a normal case. I mean, in a position like that, I would also advise my client to, uh, to be sick. Members of the public write me letters and complaining, and I see that they are justified in the complaint. Cases have been lagging in court. Sometimes you find the, that his opponent is taking everybody in circles. A party who, when the case is coming to an end, and he's seeing like he's going to lose, he, he, he fires his lawyer. Eh? And, and he says, look, I need time to get another lawyer blah, blah, to move on that. We, we, are, we are dealing with that, and we don't want those kind of delaying tactics. But even as the judiciary assumes some responsibility for making it easier for the big fish to scut accountability, the investigative authorities are not blameless. Before you take somebody to court, you must be sure that that person is really, I mean, is ready to be prosecuted. Otherwise, they keep on asking for more time to investigate. Then why take somebody to court if you're not ready for him to prosecute him? The complexity of the cases that typically involve the big fish also tilts the scales of justice in their favor to the disadvantage of Wanjiko. You have a file with 10, 15, 20 accused persons. Some of those come with two lawyers. These are rich people. One witness in one case has taken 30 days. 30 days, and I said, what the hell are you? He says, CJ, please listen. The amount of documentation that is being produced, being referred to, there is no way you can, you can move faster. The inequalities that play out between the rich and the poor in court go beyond access to competent legal counsel. Access to the courts themselves proves a challenge. And as much as we'd like to deny it, life has taught us that even before you get to court, status matters right from arrest. You hear the in a posh, yeah, gigiri, you know, place like that. But ordinarily, they should be remanded where they were arrested, the jurisdiction of that. Where they, where they committed the offense. One party after party for the rich at the expense of the poor. Because unlike the rich, the poor don't qualify to pay their bail monies in installments after shooting an unarmed entertainer in the neck. Olive Barrows, NTV. There you have it, justice for sale. And now Ken Mijungu takes a closer look at the state of the judiciary, Ken. Right. Thanks very much, uh, Silas. And of course, if you have to look at the judiciary, you have to look at the judiciary wholesome and right at the top. And with less than uh, or about one year left before he retires by operation of the law, the chief justice will not only go down in history as the one of the judges who presided over a nullified presidential election, but also one who led the judiciary at a time of great division. And then there's also that notion that the judiciary is the weakest link in the fight against corruption. Here's my report. The selection of 41 judges by the Judicial Service Commission is a recent tiff between the full arm of the government and the third. President Uhuru Kenyatta has completely refused to rubber stamp the appointments Issues of integrity, the bone of contention. But this is just one of the many conflicts between the executive and the judiciary on performance and independence. Some of us are serving at their, at their pleasure. The second in command in the judiciary, Philomena Muilu, is still wanted by the DPP on allegation of impropriety. Justice J.B. Ojuang has had his own reputation put on trial, even though he emerged victorious. His years of service and his rather exemplifying career were put to the test. Justice Mohammed Ibrahim almost got in the dock due to an alleged gun drama, while Justice Mokin Wanjala has had to respond to a 75 million shilling bribery claim. So has Lady Justice Njokin Dungu, who has had to defend bribery claims and misbehavior. For us, it was, it, was an, it was a surprise, it was unusual, but we accepted it and we said we're going to appeal okay. because we felt that the judges are in law. But that is not all. Budget cuts have affected the operations of the judiciary. I'm told these are the people I'm supposed to, to go and talk to, to give me money to run the judiciary. Am I being done a viva? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, am I being done a viva? 
we are talking about public funds for service to the Kenyan people. Many see this as a case of revisiting of the judiciary as promised by President Kenyatta when the 2017 presidential election was nullified. We are tired of being the, 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 the punching bag all the time. The judiciary is not interested and does not interfere with the affairs of other, of other arms of government. Why are they interested and interfering with our affairs? You want me to tell you why? They want to control the judiciary. As a result of the constant back and forth, the judiciary is severely affected in terms of resources and personnel. Dispensation of justice continues to be compromised and the public confidence in the judiciary continues to dwindle. Of course, you need someone to answer all those questions that have been raised in all our stories from cheated out of justice, justice delayed, the backlog of cases, and of course, justice for sale and justice viewed as aiding the rich. That's why I'm joined in a short while by principal judge at the High Court, Lady Justice Lydia Achode. We're speaking to her in a little while, but first, let's take a break. We'll be back with her. Female genital mutilation is one of the worst forms of gender-based violence that is meted on girls and women worldwide. According to UNICEF, more than 200 million girls and women alive today have been cut worldwide and 9.3 million have undergone the cut in Kenya. Another 3 million girls are at risk of undergoing the cut every year. Therefore, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta has committed to end FGM in Kenya by the year 2022. Ending FGM is the responsibility of every Every Kenyan, kukomesha ukeketaji ni jukumu langu, jukumu lako na jukumu letu. Pamoja tukomeshe ukeketaji kufikia mwaka wa 2022. This message is brought to you by the Anti-FGM Board in collaboration with UNICEF Kenya. Taking pride in constructing tomorrow skylines. Adding strength to Kenya's landmarks. Presenting the power for specialized constructions. Cementing the nation's future. Simba Cement, the strength and pride of Kenya. Now also produced in Nakuru and Mombasa. Your multi bet is only going to hit the bullseye. Oh, you lose one match, but only in Mozart. Mozart refund, lose one game, get your cash back. Make a decision. Terms and conditions apply. I help women find independence by training them in fish farming. Oh, it's tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches. Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. Panadol Extra, now with new Optizop technology to fight multiple tough pains with three times more pain relieving medicine in the first 30 minutes when you need it most. Seeing them support themselves makes any pain worth it. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Do your gums hurt? Yeah. Does your toothpaste contain sage, eucalyptus, mirror, chamomile? All that in one toothpaste? Yes, try Colgate Herbal. Colgate Herbal contains nature's best herbs and Colgate's fluoride technology to give you strong teeth and healthy gums. Ah, Colgate Herbal. Let's go. Colgate Herbal for strong teeth and healthy gums naturally. With Libana M-Pesa, you get more and now you can win. Kwa majina naitwa Salma Salim natoka Mombasa County na mimi ndio mshindi wa nyumba ya Lipa na Mpesa nilikuwa nimelala nikasikia simu nalia nikapokea I was so excited at the moment option ya kwanza itakuwa kuirent wa Kenya wote wazidi kushiriki wataweza kushinda vitu vingi kutoka kwa Safaricom Lipa na Mpesa and win now do more with Lipa na Mpesa 
The Kisumu National Polytechnic invites the public for the second annual International Multidisciplinary Conference and Open Day on 27th to 28th February 2020 at the Kisumu National Polytechnic Hall. The theme is TVET's role in building sustainable blue economy. The aim of the conference is to occasion a stage for researchers, academicians, policy makers, professional bodies and students from all over the world to present their research results network and build capacity in their various disciplines. For more details, visit our website or contact us on the numbers on your screen. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We hear from Ebola survivors on the impact of myths and misinformation about the viral disease five years on. The people in the sofa, they survived in the sofa. A BBC Africa Eye investigation uncovers shocking evidence that multiple Nigerian security forces are using a brutal ancient torture technique. We tell you how. Swapping faces in videos through artificial intelligence is cool, but tech experts warn this could have a negative impact on political messaging. And did an airline force a passenger to take a pregnancy test before boarding a plane? I think it's false. It's not true. Welcome home to Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Make the impossible possible. Success just doesn't happen. Invest in Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Call us today on 0790-300-300. And of course, we are live from the home of Principal High Court Judge, Lady Justice Lydia Achode, who is here now with us to answer to your concerns that have been raised in several stories that we have run earlier. But let me begin with my story because that was the last story that we ran. The concern that the judiciary is not independent. At what point would you ever consider the judiciary completely independent? Because it's been said that one of the reasons that the judiciary is not independent is because the finances that come to the judiciary is still controlled by the treasury. So at what point would you ever consider the judiciary as completely independent? Thank you. There are, there are different levels of independence for the judiciary. There's the decisional independence and there's the financial independence. Judicial independence is when a judge or a magistrate is sitting in their court, they are under nobody's direction to reach the conclusions that they reach in a matter that they are to determine. Financial independence is the one that has been a bit dicey for us in the judiciary because we always have to go with a begging bowl to get finances which are never enough to serve the people of Kenya. The it would look like we are therefore beholden to people, but that's not how it is. We work with what we have. Okay. We work with the little that we get to try to serve the Kenyans that we are mandated to serve. But, but even if you were to be given the adequate funds, let me say there's a proposal to have 3.5% of the total budget, or 25 as it is, because right now it's, it's still really low. Even if you had what you needed, but the money is still being controlled by the executive and the treasurer, would you guarantee financial independence of the judiciary at that point? No, you cannot, because even as we are speaking now, on the paper, the judiciary was given $16 billion. What we keep getting regularly is the recurrent okay. uh, for, for our expenditure for paying the, the emoluments and for, for running the day-to-day the -day running of the judiciary. But for development, when we have projects that are already in process, for this financial year, the money only got loaded on the IFMIS two months ago. Okay. That means we had lost six months. And in another two months, IFMIS will be being shut down so that you cannot access, access that money. It. So your problem so, is also so, the IFMIS system of getting money. But you see, IFMIS is, uh, the, it's the people who control IFMIS. IFMIS is just a system. You load in money, you get money. If you don't load in money, the judiciary doesn't get money. So if they were determined to ensure you get the money, regardless of the bureaucracies, yes. you will still get yes. the money. All right, because okay. if you can't take six months to give us money for, for contracts that we have already gotten into, for courts that are already being built, and these people, if we stop them because we haven't got money to pay them, 
we start to run into interest and into a lot of trouble. Okay, because there are already contracts and yes. commitments and the judiciary and there are knows, timelines. knows how yes. much you need to enforce yes. these contracts. Let's talk about uh, decisional independence because mm -hmm. that's one of the things that has been raised by several people who are concerned mm -hmm. about how the judiciary operates. They feel the judiciary is still um, working at the direction or behest of others. Mm -hmm. Either the executive, if it's not the executive, are the people who uh, pays the piper. Mm -hmm. So they call the tune, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure even the executive would agree with you that the judiciary is working at its behest because we have been beaten by the executive itself with which thinks that we are not doing their, their bidding. Mm -hmm. But you see, if you look, let's take, for example, the anti-corruption cases. If, for example, you look at Section 48 of the, the ASECA, the Anti-Corruption and Economic Crimes Act, mm -hmm. the, the fine it gives is a million. If you worked in a place and you, you, you led the pilferage or loss, of a billion shillings, the fine provided by the act is a million shillings. Okay. So the, uh, somebody will wonder why this person has been fined only a million, but that's what the law provides. Okay. And the judiciary can only interpret the law that exists. The judiciary cannot make up its own and say that uh, you also feel this person needed to be punished a bit, a, more, a little bit more, but you have to go with what's in the law. Like the problems that people have with bail. When we didn't have bail for, for, for people who are charged under the um, uh, robbery with violence or murder, there was no problem. The, law, the courts didn't give bail, mm -hmm. but now we have the come up changed. as the people of Kenya. Yes. And in the Constitution said, exactly. under Article 49, 1H, yeah. everybody is entitled. entitled. To bail. So these people are entitled to bail. It is, it is easier to, 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 it's more difficult to justify why you cannot give somebody bail. Because you can't just say because you stole more money than this one, so you don't yeah. get bail. Okay. Because all of them are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, which is very interesting because I want to go to a specific case in, in, in terms of the bail and ASECA and corruption. Um, what happened to the Samburu governor? The hefty bail that he was bail that he was given, it was commuted to something that was affordable at the end of the day. Uh, you were just talking about one million as a maximum. Okay. But if, if, if the ideal situation would be, would you be granted the discretion as the judiciary to impose these hefty bails? One million is not bail. One million is fine once you have been tried and you've been found guilty. Oh, but fine. for okay. bail, mm -hmm. the court has the discretion. The discretion. All, all right. To, to all right. More out. importantly, Kenyans tonight wants to know, and I'll give you two specific examples mm -hmm. in justice uh, protecting the rich. About two weeks ago or a week ago, there was this gentleman who was arrested somewhere in the coast with a python in the bag. Mm -hmm. Two days, three days later, he was already in court, convicted, given a fine of a million or a year or so in prison. We have several cases, high profile, and specifically I'll give you for Embakasi East Member of Parliament, who was in court for a while, was given bail, and even the bail uh, money was put in a way that he could afford it over a period of time. Deposit 2.5, pay the rest of a period. Mm -hmm. Why does this happen? Why is it that some people are afforded this um, freedom and the other ones are incarcerated immediately? Why does the law behave like that? You see, I cannot uh, speak about specific cases because you know when a matter is before the court, we usually don't discuss it. Yes. I would have to have read the actual file mm -hmm. to find out the reasoning of that magistrate who gave bail um, in installments. But trial has not begun here. And, and, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That is begun. bail. Yes. This other person you are talking about, mm -hmm. it's the same question we have been hearing about the Akasha, how they went there and they were tried on the spot. They pleaded guilty. There's a difference if you go to court and you plead guilty, you're dealt with on the spot. Yes. If you go to another court and you have to be tried, you could be tried for a year, even two, depending on the, 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 the magnitude of the evidence. And you see like corruption cases, the, the, the evidence is usually documentary. It's not like robbery, for, uh, for example, where well, somebody may have evidence. seen somebody yes. being stabbed or and their purse taken or something. But this one, it's cartons and cartons of documents. documents. Yes. And you must look at each one of them to verify. So it, uh, it takes a little longer. It, uh, not a little. Yeah, it takes a lot a of time. One witness can be in the dock for three weeks, one person. 
testify. Then after that, they are cross-examined by these seven lawyers, lawyers because each right. yeah. because these these are people that usually are able to afford lawyers. But the question is, so that's, that's, that's the process. That's yes. what the legal process ought to be. But yes. then people are watching and asking on the mm. flip side. Mm. They go to the U.S. Mm. and within two months mm. or so, the cases mm. are concluded. What was the difference? Because that was not a trial. That was a plea taken. Why could you it see, happen here? Because the evidence was not brought to court. They, they were never brought to this court to mm -hmm. take plea. They took that, a long time in Mombasa, no, back and forth, the, shuttling in court. Uh, let me tell you, Ken. Yeah, yes. If you come before my court because you are coming to take plea, I will read the charges to you. Mm -hmm. And if you say that is right, mm -hmm. I enter the conviction and I sentence you on the spot, and yes. that's the end of the matter. Okay. But these people were never ever brought to take plea. Okay. It was application In any court. upon yes. Okay. It was application upon application for extradition. They were not coming to take plea for whatever. There has never been a trial for those people in Kenya. Okay. That's, what, that's, Kenya, that's, that's what Kenyans should Don't remember, All right. that it was never a trial in the courts in Kenya about those people. And when they went to the state, remember the states, they will take even years just investigating you as you go around your business. Then By the time they, in, they sit done. you at the table and you look okay. at it, okay. you just plead guilty. They <laughs> okay. don't carry you, bring you to court, court. and then start asking what us we do, for time. Quite to, a waste to, to, time. Yes, to oh. asking for time now to investigate. All right. They do the investigations first. I, I, I want to go to specific cases now, uh, cheated out of justice. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the people who are watching and who share in those stories mm -hmm. really need to know in the case, for example, of Joel Kamau, who was cheated, mm -hmm. uh, what happens to them because you have made your ruling and yet the lawyer has made away with the money. Do they have records we know about double jeopardy, especially on criminal cases? What happens to them who are cheated in justice? You know, the problem with our country is that people think the police, the advocates, and the, all the probation officers, all the people that work in court are under the court system. Mm -hmm. They are not. The, the advocates are not under the, the Chief Justice or the Judicial Service Commission. Yes. Advocates, those people that have been talking, they were complaining about their advocates. They went out there, they got into agreements with these advocates, and the advocates, they are saying, conned them. So they have recourse, but it's not in the court to begin with. Okay. It is under the, 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 the Advocates Complaints Committee, Commission. Okay. That's which where deals they with to that. Yes. And they can also file, but they would have to file a case in court to see whether that contract between them was, was, was um, whether that advocate went beyond what they agreed. But the court itself, after it has entered judgment, cannot follow to police the, the, the advocates to say, you didn't pay your client. Okay. But, that's but they can come back to court the, they and can file, a, file case, another, okay. a case yes. if they entered into a contract that the other side did not observe. Okay. Yes. And, and finally, uh, the justice for sale, the notion that I can, why hire a lawyer mm -hmm. if I can buy a judge? Mm -hmm. Yes. You see, for that, everybody knows that if you have an issue with a judicial officer, we have the JAC. And it is one of the, of the, of the bodies in this country that really, really um, uh, looks after its institution so that if somebody takes, you saw even, is it about three months ago, yes. so many uh, magistrates and judges being summoned before the JAC to answer. Yes, if somebody so makes cases. a complaint, yes. the JAC does not sit on it. You can complain to the, to, the, to the chief justice, you can complain to the chief registrar, you can complain even to me as the principal judge, yes. but the person against whom you've complained must also be given a chance to, to, be to respond and exactly. to be heard. And if the JAC can investigate and find that actually the substance, that is when, if it's a judge, that is when they usually write and send it to the president. President for a tribunal yeah. to be formed. But right. when people are complaining, but they never took that complaint anywhere. You don't know that there's somebody who's been uh, um, injured or aggrieved, okay. yet they have never come forward to complain Before. to anybody. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Principal Judge <laughs> Lydia Chode, for welcoming us to your home first and for answering all our questions. Mm -hmm. And this is a discussion that will not end because our mm -hmm. team coverage on several issues still continues. But mm -hmm. time now for a short break. Business News is up next. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. 
Sona moja. Kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi. Pata ushauri wa daktari. Selina. Toto, where is mommy? Today is a toilet day. What? Oh, oh. <gasps> Selina. Toilet day? Tomorrow we're hosting a party and it's a matter of my reputation. It's a toilet. Not a white shirt. Even if you spend your entire day cleaning with bleach and detergent, it's... you won't be party ready. Impossible. Challenge. Happy 10X. Even if you use bleach and detergent 10 times, they won't give you the same sparkling clean toilet that Happy 10X will give you. Wow! Happy Xanax! Happy Kenya's number one toilet cleaner. Heaviness and a burning inside, it could be heartburn. Indigestion and heartburn? Eno gets to work in six seconds and works on the six symptoms of heartburn so you can keep living life non stop. Eno, fight heartburn and indigestion fast. Your multibet is only trying to hit the bullseye. Oh, you lose one match, but only in Mozart. Mozart refund, lose one game, get your cash back. Make a decision. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> By the way, this position is tiring. Ni machoka. Call for long at one shilling fifty cents to all networks. Ah, Dial star five four four hash to subscribe. Telcom moving with you. Welcome to the Business News, standing in for Julians, who is on assignment in Machakos. Now, Absa Bank Kenya PLC has officially launched the Absa ticker at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. This comes just nine days after the official change in brand name from Barclays Bank Kenya to Absa Bank Kenya PLC. Alex Mwangi reports. And with that, the BBK ticker is no longer at the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Instead, ABSA has taken over. I would like to assure all our shareholders that their investments in our business are sound and that they can look forward to even better returns as we continue to execute our strategy. In particular, I'd like to reassure our minority shareholders, and some of them might be present here, that the shareholding structure remains the same. For us, as Africans, there can be no doubt that whilst others chairmen have sought to de-risk themselves and exited our markets, we are brave, we're passionate and committed to investing in our markets. We don't want simply to be prospects for others. The history of Barclays Bank in Kenya dates back more than a century, and it's not easy to change such an established brand in people's minds. However, the APSA group is more than equal to this task. Many colleagues have also worked for the bank many years. We have colleagues who have worked 30, 40 years for the bank. So what we are doing is we are working closely with all the stakeholders. We celebrate the history, that 104-year history that we have here in Kenya. We have deep roots. We're, we're systemically important in this economy. And, and I think now we're just moving uh, you know, into this new transition of APSA, where we're proud to be an African bank. We're proud to be a Kenyan bank. We're very, very happy that we've gotten to this point where we now, across the continent, can now trade under one brand. So there is one APSA, one brand, one vision, one purpose, endless possibilities that we are looking to bring to life to all of you. Coming home, I am coming home. The change of name follows a decision in 2018 by the parent company, APSA Group Limited, to rebrand all its operations in 12 markets across Africa to ABSA. It followed a decision by Barclays PLC to reduce its majority shareholding in Barclays Africa Group Limited to 14.9% and the subsequent renaming of Barclays Africa Group Limited to ABSA Group Limited. Alex Mwangi, NTV. NTV can now reveal that state corporations, departments and agencies at the national government have cleared less than 1% of pending bills with 290.7 billion shillings yet to be paid to suppliers and businessmen. 
In a public dress down to the bosses of state power statals, the National Treasury's Cabinet Secretary Ukur Yatani has ordered all state corporations and agencies to clear all pending bills and also come up with plans on how they will clear all their outstanding loans within four months. As at 30th January 2020, state corporations had only paid 2.2 billion shillings of pending bills out of 292.9 billion shillings that was outstanding. It has now come to the fore that even as a push was being made to have counties address pending bills, accounting bosses at various parastatals at the national level of government failed to take the cue to act on pending bills in their books. Pending bills have robbed this country. They have smashed aspirations and the dreams of upcoming private sector, upcoming employers, people who are vibrant and they wanted to make a difference, institutions like yours have procured goods through deceitful means and have refused to pay them. Even when they pay, they pay at their own pleasure. Besides ignoring to pay suppliers and contractors, the agencies have also failed to remit statutory deductions such as pay as you earn, the National Social Security Fund and the National Hospital Insurance Fund. Pensions and savings and credit cooperative deductions are also outstanding. It's so embarrassing for any government when their own institutions refuse to pay, default on it. And you need to tell us how you are going to wind you up. Ukur ordered the corporations to align their budgetary resources to settle all pending bills and statutory obligations by the end of the current financial year. The cabinet secretary has also directed the agencies to provide a progress report to the national treasury on a monthly basis. The government's outstanding loans stood at 809.9 billion shillings as at June 2019. From that amount, Uku revealed that 118.6 billion shillings is not being serviced. He singled out the water and sugar sectors as the ones bearing the majority of inactive loans. As of 20th December, KRA is owed from you over 14 billion as pay as you earn. NSSF, 510 million. NHIF contribution is 109 billion. Circles, a number of corporations deducted that money at the source, but were not remitted the circles. 2.2 billion. In what seemed like a lecture on financial discipline, CS Ukuriatan asked all state agencies in today's meeting to adhere to the existing laws and also respect the policies and directives given by the government. The CS has given state agencies up to the end of this month to withdraw any court cases between themselves and other state agencies, directing them to go down the path of mediation. Lillian Kierie, NTV. An estimated 5,000 young people converged at the Machakos People's Park in a bid to tap into the opportunities availed through the Youth Empowerment Conference. The conference brought together stakeholders from both public and private sectors seeking to play their part in addressing the twin challenges of unemployment among the youth and a shortage of specialized skills. Julian Samboko reports. How to circumvent the scarcity of new opportunities for gainful employment dominated discussion at the Youth Empowerment Conference in Machakos, with the forum bringing under the spotlight the youth unemployment crisis the country is facing. Our government is supposed to open a place where by Vijana and Ezafanya Biashara. Sasa, Lugua to Nataka Pesa Ile, in a way, I could to bear goof. Then give it to the Lakers of Kuba. Rajoyanku Nikuan and Kuan Mapata Job Uija, Yone Mabayaku Kiram Suri and Kirutu Kenya. Machakos County Governor Dr. Alfred Mutua, on his part, urged the youth to shun divisive politics and focus more on enhancing their economic well being stories of Kenya to not be just about BBI, to be just about uh, gaining position of power, sijui tanga tanga, weleweke. It should be about money and economics. How do we get our young people employed? Parents have spent money and yet they're just sitting at home. Unemployment is biting in this country, particularly among the youthful population across the country. Now the county government of Machako says it will be organizing such kind of fora every year to ensure there are appropriate linkages between the youth and investors in the private sector. 
Julian Amboko, NTV. Savings and credit cooperatives should embrace technology and innovation, especially on the mobile phone platform, in order to stay abreast with changing consumer trends and stave off competition from digital lenders. At the ongoing fifth annual SACO Leaders Convention in Mombasa, the role of innovation in provision of financial services dominated deliberations about the future of the sector, which has amassed savings exceeding one trillion shillings. The need for new and tougher regulations to protect the savings of an estimated 14 million Kenyans who are SACO members also came up amid the growing number of cases of SACOs collapsing with billions of shillings of members' savings. The convention, which was officially open on Wednesday, ends on Friday. Investing in business and farms, meeting daily needs and paying for education are the top uses for digital credit. As such, various startups are now betting on this approach to disrupt traditional models of lending. The onus is on circles to innovate around this model to avoid losing members to other more convenient and fast financial service providers. We should think of the plight of the many members and ask ourselves if there is anything else we can still do to salvage the savings of the members. Even when we are required to wind up then priority number one should be the member and not the creditors. Because three quarters of the time, the creditors have actually colluded with management to fleece the sack. We end business on a concrete note and cement manufacturer Bamburi is banking on the effects of the removal of the interest rate cap and cement demand for the government's affordable housing program to turn around the dwindling fortunes of the cement industry. Cement production and utilization in Kenya has been falling over the last four years, a drop attributed to a number of factors including sluggish economic growth as well as the reduced scale of development of the standard gauge railway project. Under the Big Four housing project, the Kenya government aims to hit a target of having 500,000 affordable housing units built by the year 2022. 2020, now that this uh, interest rate uh, is not capped anymore, that will, let's say, uh, unleash all the full potential uh, of Kenya because we are convinced that there is a lot of potential in Kenya, there are a lot of needs, uh, just mentioning affordable housing and the big four agenda. And that's all from the business desk. More on NTV tonight after the break. At Safaricom Foundation, we believe that people's dreams have the power to uplift their communities. And this is why we are committed to investing in programs that focus on health, education, and economic empowerment. Through Ndoto Zetu, last year, we met one such dreamer, Dr. Michael Kazungu, who believed that improving some of the facilities at Blue Nile Hospital would increase the levels of access to healthcare for the residents of Mkoroshoni in Kilifi County. Tulikuwa kama wana kijiji tunapata shida sana. Kwa bahati nzuri tulipo apply basi tulitunukiwa zawadi kubwa sana. Mashini ya kupima damu na pulmogram machine pamoja na kile kitanda. Wengi ambao wanakuja sasa hivi wanapata huduma nzuri kwa bei nafuu. Tuma ombi lako leo online safaricomfoundation.org forward slash ndoto zetu au tafuta msafara wa safaricom mkoa wako. Ndoto zetu, uwezo wetu. Runner Auction Drive, Runner Auto Selection Limited, importers of selected motor vehicles, introduces 100 newly imported cars on auction. Visit our Kisumu, Eldred and Nairobi branches and drive away with a brand new motor vehicle at the lowest prices. 27th February, Kisumu. 28th February, Eldred. 29th February, Nairobi. We shall also be having auctions in Kisumu every Thursday starting from 20th February. 
For more inquiries, call or WhatsApp 0701-777-779. Rana Auto Selection. Your choice, your success. 143 Brookview presents to you the biggest deal. Buy a fully serviced 8th acre plot at 6.85 million shillings and build your dream villa. 143 Brookview in Membley is a luxury gated community on 20 acres with serviced plots and ready house designs for selection and construction at cost. It's easily accessible through the Northern Bypass and is in close proximity to schools, hospitals and malls. Social amenities to include a nursery school, retail center, riverfront recreational park and a clubhouse. So book today with only 10% and get amazing fittings for your dream villa. We welcome you to our open day on 22nd and 23rd February. SMS 143 to 20409 or call 0784 143 143. Financing available from Standick Bank. 143 Brookview, a development by eBoss Investments Company Limited. Prepare yourself for a new live bet experience. Top minute boosted live bet odds. Mozart, make a decision. Thanks for staying with us. Tonight, we can report that the Ministry of Health could be behind the financial woes that the National Health Insurer, NHIF, is going through. The ministry is alleged to have coerced the fund into spending large sums of money towards the Universal Health Coverage Program, expenditure NHIF had not budgeted for. Leila Mohammed reports. On Tuesday, the National Hospital Insurance Fund Board was announcing plans to cut down on administration costs in a bid to save the agency from collapsing. Robert Duba, the board's vice chair, said the cuts would target advertising, salaries and accommodation, among other administrative costs, which constitute 14% of expenditure. It is the responsibility of this board of management to put that uh, the situation right. But details seen by NTV show that the parent ministry could be playing a key part in bleeding the health insurer dry. Sources within the ministry say that an estimated 5 billion shillings may have been channeled towards the universal health program, including the printing of AFIA cards, using the four counties of Kisumu, Machakos, Nyeri and Makueni, where UHC was piloted. It would be sad if NHIF collapsed. Okay. It has really transformed the medical um, facilities. It has really helped a lot of people. Already NHIF has systems to register and print the cards used for insurance but the ministry introduced the Afia Care cards launched by the president on December 13th, 2018 in Kisumu. <laughs> Out of the 45 billion collected in 2018, 8.3 billion was spent on administration activities. NHIF cannot survive in the current structure. It cannot uh, survive in the current form of doing business. My proposal was NHIF should be run the way AAR is. They should have their own clinics, they should have their own chemists, they should employ their own doctors. The Ministry of Health is said to have been advised against creating a parallel system to NHIF since UHC was sold collectively as a health system strengthening initiative. NHIF Acting Managing Director Nicodema Sodongo is denying claims that the parent ministry coerced them into engaging in any unplanned for expenditure. Leila Mohamed, NTV. Elsewhere, families of Kenyan students caught up in the COVID-19 outbreak are now asking the president to intervene and have the students brought home immediately. The families say their children are surviving under extreme conditions as the lockdown in Wuhan in China persists. NTV's Brenda Wanga with the details. There were strangers before, now they are bound by a common bond, the anxiety over the fate of their kin stuck in Wuhan, China. That anxiety has been building over the last two months and now it is reaching breaking point. Our children are asking us, where is mom? When is she coming? We are told there's a virus in China. Is she okay? We tell her she's coming. Since the outbreak, the Kenyan government has maintained that the students in Wuhan were safer there than back home. But the kin of the affected say the opposite is true. It is painful when your child is suffering there, yet you are here. 
kuna mtoto anashangaa kuchua laptop hapa asiki kama au asiki kama kile that is something painful inafanya watu tunashangaa kuchua which type of Kenya we are living now now the families of those affected by the lockdown in Wuhan say the government's neglect of keeping them in the loop of what they intend to do to ensure the safe return of their kid is making the situation that much worse the parents want the government to bring their children home or allow them to facilitate that evacuation that they so desperately want. Should anything happen to them, they will bring them home without struggle. They will bring them home. Then they will say they want to compensate the families. We are not interested in any compensation. We want our people back alive when we can still talk to them and hear their well. Serikari Yarakishi, Ju vile muda unaendelea ndio sasa wanaendelea kupatwa na mashida tofauti tofauti They also question why other nationalities are allowed to travel from China to Kenya while the Kenyan students are prohibited from leaving the country The Kenyan remain hopeful that the government will heed their plea and bring their children back The government in the meantime says it is confident of its preparedness to handle any suspected cases of the virus Isolation centers have been set up at Kenyatta National Hospital and Bagathi Hospital. Brenda Wanga, NTV. Well, we certainly hope that the government is listening to those desperate calls from those families. All they want is their kin back. All right, time for a breather on NTV tonight. The sports news with Brian is coming up. He's standing by. Don't go far. Breastfeeding tips for new mothers. Anticipate your baby's desires. You can anticipate their needs by watching for a few telltale signs. Get comfortable while nursing. The constant squirming and moving on your part can disrupt your baby's breastfeeding. Kiss kids diapers. Kiss kids. No rashes. Kiss kids. No rashes. Bye bye rashes. Buy diapers. Choose kiss kids. Prepare yourself for a new live bet experience. Top minute boosted live bet odds. Mozart, make a decision. Breathable surface developed with airsoft technology is very soft and provides the best Molfix skincare. I've found the best diaper for my baby sensitive skin. All babies deserve a high quality diaper. You should also try Molfix. This is Fact Finder from the BBC. We hear from Ebola survivors on the impact of myths and misinformation about the viral disease five years on. People, the people in the sofa, they survived in the sofa. A BBC Africa Eye investigation uncovers shocking evidence that multiple Nigerian security forces are using a brutal ancient torture technique. We tell you how. Swapping faces in videos through artificial intelligence is cool, but tech experts warn this could have a negative impact on political messaging. And did an airline force a passenger to take a pregnancy test before boarding a plane? I think it's false. It's not true. Welcome home to Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Make the impossible possible. Success just doesn't happen. Invest in Amani Ridge, the place of peace. Call us today on 0790-300-300. NTV Sport, in association with Mozart Bet. SMS NTV to 2990. Let's have a look at the day's sports news. Welcome, my name is Brian Otwal. 
Harambe Starlet's head coach David Ouma has released the provisional squad for the Turkish Women's Cup scheduled for 2nd of March to 11th of March. The squad has seen all the players who recently landed deals in foreign clubs in the likes of Anedi Kundu and Ruth Ngozi omitted, perhaps so as to give them time to settle in their new teams. However, in the absence, midfielder Jen Jerry of Falling Water Club has earned a call-up. Oma will use this squad as a test team for the, those he will later select to play in the 2020 Africa Women Cup of Nations, the qualifiers in April. Other countries which will participate in the Turkish Women Tournament include Hungary, Venezuela, Hong Kong, Romania, Uzbekistan, Northern Ireland, Turkmenistan and Chile. This is a big move for our national team again to play in Turkish uh, Women Cup where we will face a team that are highly ranked, a team like Chile, uh, consistently at the World Cup. So I think it gives us a big plus to develop the resilience that it needs once we get the opportunity, for example, to compete for, uh, to qualify for the uh, Africa Women Cup of Nations, that eventually, again, will give us the opportunity and possibility to qualify for the World Cup. And the Beyond Zero Half Marathon set for next month received a shot in the arm after Corporate Bank of Kenya donated 20 million shillings as well as contributions from other banks and media houses. This latest contribution is the fourth in such donation by the bank which brings the accumulative contribution to over 57 million contributed in the last five years. Nation Media Group also contributed 10 million shillings in the event. First Ladies Beyond Zero flagship seeks to promote zero maternal deaths, zero child marriages, zero new HIV infections, as well as zero female genital mutilation in the five-kilometer run. The fifth edition of the 2020 Beyond Zero Half Marathon is slated for 8th of March. Thank you. For us, what we are coming to do is to provide a 360 media solution for this event and to say that um, health is very personal to the Nation Media Group. Um, and why is that so? I think you must have seen that every Tuesday, when you pick a copy of your um, Daily Nation, you will see a specific insert that is called Healthy Nation. And that specific insert is an insert that shows our commitment uh, to health. Um, another thing that is also very passionate for us is um, the conversations that we drive around health um, through the Nation Leadership Forum. Sorry for that tag down there. And moving on, the KCB National Autocross Championship will head to a new venue on Sunday at the Waterfront Mall in Karen for round two. Two-wheel drive Nantarbo champion Zamir Vaji posted the fastest overall time of the day in the last meeting at the Jamhuri Park and will renew his rivalry with Sari Mughal. The day will feature four hits, and the best of the three times will count towards the final classification with the fastest time of the day in each category culminating into two bonus championship points. Also expected to spice up the Sikh Union round are former two-wheel drive turbo champions Imran Hakada and Shalin Mughal. And injury-ravaged Tottenham Hotspurs host German surprise package RB Leipzig in the Champions League last 16 tonight, while Atlanta play Valencia. Last night, Liverpool lost 1-0 to Atletico Madrid, while Erling Braut Haaland continued his remarkable scoring form this season with two more goals to give Borussia Dortmund a 2-1 advantage over Paris Saint-Germain. They will kick off at Anfield in three weeks' time. Liverpool must come from behind in the Champions League last 16 return tie against Atletico Madrid. After
tonight. Thank you so much for your company. It was um, team coverage Should Wednesday. You on trial. That's right. We certainly hope that you learned a lot from it. Do share your comments. Continue the conversation on Twitter. But that's where we leave it for now. Thanks to our sign language interpreter, David Agondoa and Smithy Vidyahi. And we certainly appreciate the whole team that put this together tonight, the special team coverage. And we'll be endeavouring to make it a weekly thing, of course, uh, following what matters to you, the Mwananchi. For now, we say good night and uh, have yourself a good Thursday tomorrow. This is NTV. Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. Panadol Extra, now with new Optizob technology to fight multiple tough pains with three times more pain relieving medicine in the first 30 minutes when you need it most. Today is just a highlight of what we've been doing over the last one year primarily, just to ensure that we cover every area of this country through Betikana community. We give the uniforms, we give nets, we give, uh, we rehabilitate the fields where they play and ensure that every person in this country basically has an opportunity to be able to showcase their talent. So we were in Meru, we were in Kisi, we were in Kakamega County. We've also done a lot of activities in Nairobi. We've also done activities in Machakos. And all these places where we've gone, Kenyans are basically saying, can you support me by having something like a uniform? Can you support me by having a soccer ball that I can play with? And this is what we've been doing.